when there is a huge amount of jobs added to an economy and we are already trying to cool the economy, it gives them more power to increase those interest rates even higher. absolute banger coming out of Canada because our jobs report are three times greater than the United States per capita. Nobody was expecting these job numbers out of the US and Canada even blew that out of the water, which means there is no pause in rates that is coming up. So what just happened and the release of those job numbers today is going to affect your home. So for every quarter of a percent that that interest rate goes up, your home will drop $25,000 on a million dollar price property and probably not just going to be one more quarter point raise. It could be two or three moving forward. So the pause that Big Tiff was talking about in Canada is not going to be happening anymore, in my opinion. Let's jump straight into the article. It was a banker, man. I can't believe it. Mark Carney, who used to be governor of the Bank of Canada, he was saying that the recession is coming, but interest rates won't come down anytime soon. Now, remember that we have changed the definition so many times of what a recession is that most people still don't know what this mythical thing is that's coming. And I'm telling you, it's already here. We're experiencing it. Home prices came out today and the home prices for all homes in Toronto. Now this is Toronto, the suburbs, way out to Hamilton, all the way to Oshawa, up to Barrie, all over the place. We're talking millions and millions of homes. The average price is down now. Check the screen, 29.5% in 12 months, 29% down from 1.48 million down to just over 1 million. That is shocking. I've never seen it that big. If we want to change it to the average type of price home, the average price is down 27% if we're not looking at the median. And if we want to include all condos in that mix, the total drop in the last 12 months is 23%. So we're talking massive disruptions in this market, and we're going to see a lot more coming. So if we want to head over to that Mark Carney story, Mark Carney, he said, with 150,000 jobs added in January, Canada's economy seems to be doing better than expected. Now, we're not surprised to see that at all, but this comment really jumped out at me that Canadians should be under no illusions about the state of the economy. One of the things that you need in a crisis, you need to be straight with the people about the scale of the issue. The economy has some momentum, but it's misleading. There is so many signs pointing toward massive trouble in the Canadian house housing market. And the fact that homes are down 30% should send shivers down your spine because a lot of people will not be able to remortgage that at the higher prices. So imagine you had a $1.6 million home and a $1.2 million mortgage on that home. Imagine if home prices drop 30%, your new value of your property might only be 1.1, which you can only get a mortgage of 800,000. But if you owed 1.4 on it before or something, where are you going to come up with that difference of $600,000? If you don't have it, you might not be able to get your new mortgage. And this is what's going to force people into foreclosures at huge numbers. Now, it doesn't all happen in one day. The majority of Canadians all have five year or less fixed or variable terms. So pretty much everybody is on a variable except for the people that own their homes. A lot of trouble is going to be coming down that pipeline every week as more and more people are going to be in trouble. All right, let's check another article here. You can go to BNM Bloomberg. Canada crushes expectations, adding 150,000 jobs in January. We did an article yesterday on the United States. The United States added 500,000 jobs in their economy, which was a blowout out of thousands of economists in the United States and hundreds of economists in Canada that all work for the government, how did they go so wrong on those numbers? Now, Canada is 10 times smaller than the US. If we were going to do it for per capita, we would see 500,000 job increase down in the United States and 50,000 job increase up in Canada. To put that in perspective, we're now at 150. Per capita, we have three times the hiring that the United States is on and they're burning like crazy as well. So this is going to cause some massive, massive problems. Problems. Please look here, 10 times the median estimate. 10 times. How were they that far off? So the United States, they were off by three times. We were off 10 times. Fifth consecutive month of job increases, bringing the total to 326,000 jobs since September. Absolutely crazy. They are showing that the labor market is very tight, but they are, notice what they're saying, running at unsustainably hot pace. Now, just yesterday, for the first time in Canada's history, 
they released a statement of all the things that went into all the points deciding the last increase of the rates. So we got a chance to read through it, have a whole other YouTube video that you can click on the link below and we can check that out. Let's go back to check on what they put out there just yesterday. The council, which included Tiff Macklem, the governor of the Bank of Canada, he concluded that wage momentum, so too many jobs being added to the market, wage momentum was plateauing in the range of four to 5% increases in wages. Remember how many times that we have heard that if you are a patriot in the United States or a patriot in Canada, that you would not raise the wages of your employees because if you raise their wages, they have more money to go buy stuff, more inflation. Also, they were saying, if you're an employee, don't go ask for more income of any kind because then you'll have more money in your pocket. Remember, if we go back to what they're saying here, too many jobs are coming in the market and the pay increases are four to 5%. But they're saying that persistent wage growth is not viewed as consistent to achieving 2% inflation. Now we have to dissect that a little bit, right? So if you ask for a wage increase or you get a wage increase, that's a problem. They need people to not make any more money as things get more expensive, which sounds kind of crazy, sounds bad backwards. But this job explosion is going to have huge effects. And so any dream that we had of having interest rates actually pause now, I think is thrown so far out the window, you can't even get that far. When they are going to get this information, they're going to be forced to continue raising rates higher and higher. For me, it's 100% that it's impossible that the pause will be on the bank Tiff Macklem had suggested. Let's get back into the articles. You can go check this out on the Bank of Canada's website, Summary of Governing Council Deliberation. It's the very first thing that they have. In response to that, if we look at the Canada to USD chart today, if you go check out that on any website you want, you'll see when they came out with that news, it went vertical, the dollar in value. We have to break down why does the dollar react so quickly when they'll say that we had such good job numbers. Because when there is a huge amount of jobs added to an economy and we are already trying to cool the economy, it's going to give him all the reason that he needs to increase those interest rates even higher. It gives him more power to be able to raise those interest rates higher because so far it hasn't done anything. Here is something I want you to go and check out that article in the Bank of Canada. He mentioned that inflation is coming down, but it was based on two things. And they were talking about the U.S. debt ceiling and keep on funding the government right there, completely not in Canada's control. Second thing, that energy prices have come way down from $120 a barrel down to $75. But guys, that's also not in Canada's control. That's a whole bunch of OPEC nations. So the two reasons that inflation has come down has nothing to do with Canada raising the rates. So this is going to give him a lot more ammunition to keep on raising those rates higher. Now, they were talking about maybe finishing at 5.15 at the central bank, but we may see that go higher, even as high as six before we're going to see any relief. Now, there is a lag effect that's going to happen, but home prices are going to be the place that it's going to get affected the most. Again, if we go back to all houses in Toronto, all houses, all condos, everything, it's 23% down on the year. Remember, if we go into houses, it was down 29%. If we want to look at just condos, though, condos are only down 15% on the year. Pay attention to this, 15% on the year on just condos. But if we take it completely all out, it goes 23% for the blended number. But why are houses losing a lot more money than condos? it's strictly because of price because everybody is being forced to sell those expensive homes and move down that chain homes into semis semis into towns towns down into condos but once you're in a condo you can't really go much below that and people are very sticky when it comes to the areas because their family lives there their friends their kids go to school there and so they're not going to be leaving as quickly so people are very quick to downsize but very slow to move cities. Anyway, this jobs report to me is your answer of what the future is holding as far as your interest rates. This level of job of 150,000 jobs added is so far past what we expected. Did you notice that it was 10 times higher than what they expected, which tells me that all those economists that are working for the government, uh, I don't know. All of you, I kind of feel like a queen of hearts. You know, ah, off with their with heads. Their heads.
why why do you need them if they're that far off i mean a blind monkey throwing darts could probably give you a better answer anyway this is why you got to do some of your own due diligence some of your own research into this stuff because always if you just see the headlines it's not going to be digging into it as much home prices are down farther than i can even go back in any charts and so at any other time in history if prices would have been down five percent we would have said we're in a lot of trouble. Remember in Toronto, where I'm from, it didn't matter. 2007, 8, 9, home prices here didn't go down at all. That was the last really big recession that was going to melt the world. And now that they're down 30%, unbelievable. And a lot of people are going to be left holding that bag. Anyway, I hope that this helped you guys out. This is big news for me in my field. I expect home prices to continue to be dropping through the year, at least until quarter three, until they get a handle on this. Because so far, what they have done hasn't made any effect on the market. Anyway, you guys, I hope this helps. I hope that it gives you some value. Please consider subscribing. If there's anything I can do, leave a couple questions and maybe send it to a friend. Hope you have a great day. Thanks so much for sticking around. If you like that video, you might like this one and maybe something like that.